Well, fancy seeing you here. Glad you're with us. Today is hump day, Wednesday, the 24th of June. We're shifting gears again. We're going to use the same text as we did yesterday. However, Romans chapter 12. And so if you're following along in your Bibles, go ahead and grab those. We've talked about alelon in the Greek means uh, one another or each other. And the one another's then in scripture help guide and direct us in how we live our relationships. And you can hear the beautiful, I believe it's a haka above me. And uh, the birds, I can hear the pheasant in the background, see a couple ducks on the pond. Uh, what a joyous day it is. So we've been talking about then uh, the, the one another's and the, the gift of being in relationship with each other and, and living as the body of Christ. And we're using these verses to help shape and direct the way we live in relationship with each other. Uh, in, in particular at Richland Lutheran Church as God has called us together as uh, his, his church. We've talked then about three, well, two areas so far. Uh, the first area we talked about was uh, being in unity with one another. And the scriptures speak uh, the most actually about unity and, uh, and love. And that was our second area of study was love. Today we're moving on to talk about humility, how we are how we are to take a posture of humility before one another. Really at the end of the day, what this means is that we value the other person more than we value ourselves. And this is counter to our, our nature of sin. You see, sin would, would have us be more concerned about ourselves as the highest value. And it really is an act of surrender and submission to God first in humility and then to each other second that leads us to valuing the other person because we don't do it very often you know the the it's been said the unholy trinity me myself and I is the the one that we love most and I got to tell you, it's easy to fall into the trap of living for me, myself, and I. But the one another's in Scripture clearly speak that we are to value others above ourselves. And so again, we're in Romans 12, just like yesterday. And I'm going to start at verse 9. We're going we're gonna to go then, I think, through verse 13. So Paul says to the church at Rome, love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love. And then listen to this, the second part of verse 10, honor one another above yourselves. Hold on to that. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. Hmm. Honor one another above yourselves. I wonder if we do this. It's certainly not part of our natural makeup. Our natural makeup is sin and selfishness. But that's the encouragement. And I wonder what our church would look like, what the world would look like, if we considered others above ourselves. What does that mean? It means give them the, the place of honor. Uh, th this word for honor uh, has its roots in the, the culture of the day, which was the uh, first century Judaism. And the, the position or the seat of honor was always at the right hand of the the Lord, so either the, the Lord of the manor or the home, uh, the leader or the uh, Lord of the people. And so this position of honor was always at the right hand. And you put a person at that position of honor as the leader or as the head of the household uh, to honor them even above yourself. And that's why, by the way, Jesus has taken the seat where? Left? Nope. 
at the right hand of God the Father, the place or the seat of honor. Do we, peop- do we put people there? Do we, peop- do we put people that we love and care about, that we want to honor in that seat next to us? Because this is really what Paul is encouraging the church at Rome to do with each other, the alelon. Take that brother in Christ, take that sister in Christ, put him in that place of honor. And that's, that's more than respecting them. I mean, we, we respect each other, uh, but this is lifting them up. It's putting ourselves in a, a place of humble surrender and submission. It's casting that spotlight upon them. And it's saying to the world, look at my sister or look at my brother in this place of honor. Don't look at me. I'm not really that big of a deal. But she is or he is. You see, I, I, I think about the, the idea of doing this in the church, but also beyond the church. What if, as we consider our response to the systemic racism in America, what if we put those who are, are marginalized, those who are uh, vilified at that seat of honor? I wonder if I took uh, a black friend and put them in that seat of honor what that would do to the world. I wonder if I took that person of color and put them at that seat of honor. This is something I can do. I can honor them. And I can say to the others around me, they are in the seat of honor. I think that's a tangible way that, that we could help make Black Lives Matter. That we can say, yes, this is a brother or this is a sister in Christ whom I love and I love by honoring them. I wonder if the world would change. I'd like to think so. It would be slow. It would be one seat of honor at a time, but it would be a start. And so Christian friends, as as we consider how we humble ourselves before and to one another, I I would like, like us to truly enter into prayer asking God, God, what does this look like in my life? Let us pray. God, it's a gift to be here with each other virtually in spirit. Continue to unite us, uh, to help us to share in love and, uh, and to humble ourselves before each other. God, help us to reserve a seat of honor for someone that you have in our lives or maybe not even yet in our lives that we would honor them and then, and then they would be honored among the people that, that influence us. And so, Lord, uh, this would take a humble and contrite heart. Help us to be those who pray and devote ourselves to serving and loving you and honoring others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, tomorrow's, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday, and so you've made it through half of the week. We're looking forward to being with you tomorrow, and until then, God bless you.